If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a super casual deck tech for you. This deck is not a real deck. I mean, I guess it is technically a real deck, but this is one that I use as a teaching deck, you see. I don't actually play this competitively, uh, except in, this, in these two videos, one here, one here, I guess. Uh, because I didn't have a deck with me, I wasn't expecting to play, and hey, we could use one more player. All right, so I'm in. Uh, but this is a teaching deck. When I'm bringing someone into the modern format, or just competitive magic in general, one value that I like to instill is an appreciation for interaction. If your deck isn't extremely fast, then you need to interact with your opponent in some way. Hand attack, counter spells, removal spells, you know, something as such. And this deck kills on turn four unless the opponent has any of those forms of interaction. So if we're going to start off, we have four Countryside Crusher, which just seeing this card on its own tells a lot of you what deck I'm playing. If this, is, if this happened to be the only card you saw in the deck, you would know the rest of the deck. Well, sort of. Sort of, kind of. So I run four Countryside Crushers. All that we care about here is that at the beginning of our upkeep, we check the top card. Is it a land? If so, put it in the graveyard and then repeat. If not, oh well, it stays on the top. But, whenever a land card is put into the graveyard from anywhere, you put a plus one plus one counter on Countryside Crusher. Mountains! That is 55... I think my sister's back, so I won't say it. Mountains. <laughs> 55 frigging mountains. Yeah, so, and then, but well, what are we doing with that? We're making the Countryside Crusher huge, obviously. It keeps going, it keeps uh, flipping mountains until you either hit another Countryside Crusher or are one of Fling. This deck is so dumb. This deck is so dumb. So four Countryside Crusher, a fling, 55 mountains. This is the Countryside Crusher test, I like to call it. Can you beat a, a, a turn four Countryside Crusher kill? If not, you need more interaction in your deck. <laughs> you absolutely do. Because pretty much anything, any interaction, will deal with that card. Pretty much. But they have to actually do it. Uh, and so... If we're trying to take the deck a little bit more seriously, because we can actually make this into a real, real deck. Oh, just co covering her face, or framing her face. Ah, I liked it the way it was. Let's do it this way. Well, there are some other cards that we can put in, actually. Now, granted, we can't have any other non-lands, or we mess with the consistency of the deck. But, we can add other cards. Now, that being the case, I should note, you can't keep a hand unless it has a Countryside Crusher in it. Or you are just, you know, a betting person. Don't do that, though. Uh, this deck isn't consistent. Is It isn't even remotely consistent. With four Countryside Crushers in a 60-card deck, you're about 40% to find at least one in your opening hand. And then you have to mulligan until you find a Countryside Crusher. This does not work. This does not usually work. Uh, for our lands, we have, obviously, mountains, except in all of the spots I'm about to show you now. And all of these will either be, for every land I'm about to show you, either a four of or a one of. So, let's get started. Our first one is a bit of a doozy. It's four Cavern of Souls. Now, it does generate red mana. Um, it just allows us to play uncounterably, basically. We don't need all of our lands to generate red, because you do have one colorless in the cost, but I try to avoid those that don't. 
I mean, it's not likely that you're going to get flooded with them, with colorless lands. But the ones that produce colorless generally aren't as good anyway, for at least not of the ones that I've seen that only require red for activated abilities. So Hellion Crucible isn't good, Blighted Gorge isn't good, maybe there are some that I'm missing, and I do have one in here that I'm trying. If you have any suggestions, then go for it. But four Cavern of Souls to make our giants uncounterable. Next we have a one of Gemstone Caverns, which does produce colorless, but also produces red, but only one or the other. This one's weird. This one allows you to get out the turn two Countryside Crusher. If it's in your opening hand and you're on the draw, then you can exile a card from your hand, put it into play. And it sort of lets you actually go first. It sort of reads, you went first? Not really. I'm actually the one going first. Now, uh, forgive me for this. Oh, and by the way, only one of because it's legendary and extras don't really do you all that good anyway. All that much good. Gitu Encampment. Uh, so not only is this a proxy, but it's black and white, because this is not a deck that I seriously want to make. Uh, I'm not seriously going to bring this to any tournaments, so I don't want to invest anything in it, you know. So just getting a black and white copy. But yeah, this is uh, just a manland, or a landfolk, or whatever we're calling them nowadays. I like landfolk, it sounds cool. Both of them sound, co sound cool to me, I don't know. Um, but in any case... It's just a 2-1 first striker that stalls the game for you while you're looking for a countryside crusher. That's essentially it. Its purpose is, oh no, I've lost my countryside crusher, or I had to mulligan to oblivion. This just helps me to stall for time to try to find another one. Now, we also have, this one's not a land folk, but it generates tokens. It's another legendary that makes colorless. This is Care Keep. The flavor text on it is extremely accurate, I think. There's still here. The cockroach may have finally met its match. From Teferi. Yeah, so <laughs> it makes 0-1 kobolds ad infinitum. This, again, is just another stall card. I have four looming spires. Thank you, Battle for Zendikar, for giving us another land. Death Touch can wreck your countryside crusher until it finds fling. This gives your creature plus one, plus one, yes, and first strike, so you can swing into a death toucher if you need to. Or if they chomp, you know, I, you don't have any way to give it trample, actually, so that isn't that big of a deal. Uh, but if they chomp block with more than one creature, for whatever reason, whatever that might be, say if you put a bunch of green lands in here too, red green lands, and you have Keswick Wolf Run, then they can't do that without losing a bunch of creatures as well. Uh, without you losing yours, uh, regardless of whether they have one death toucher or 20 death toucher. Well, okay, 20 maybe. <laughs> you do get pretty big though, dude. Uh, next we have four smoldering spires. This just makes it where target creature can't block this turn when it enters. So, oh, you only have one creature. My 2020 countryside crusher is going to swing through regardless. And then a teetering peaks, just plus two plus out. Oh. Now the fact that Teetering Peaks is increasing your power by two and Looming Spires by one often isn't that big of a deal, but it might be for the purpose of flinging your creature. You might actually not make it quite all the way to a 20-20, but you can still fling at them. So if we're trying to take the deck somewhat seriously, then you do have these cards in here. They can do something. And so when you have all of these together, that means that you have 33 mountains left in your deck, assuming that you don't add any others. I would also recommend adding in some fetch lands too. And the reason is because when a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, this means that when you play the Countryside Crusher, you start, you know, on your upkeep, flip a bunch of cards. You're not going to add any lands to your hand for the rest of the game. But... If you happen to have any fetch lands in your hand uh, when Countryside Crusher goes off, well, that's all right. You can actually still uh, play a fetch land from your hand and then crack it, pay one life. It gets another plus one, plus one counter. And if that makes the difference, then by all means. It's also there for deck thinning to try to find the Countryside Crusher. It's negligible, perhaps, but it's deck thinning nonetheless. 
and in a format that's about margins as much as modern or even legacy, that could make all the difference. Now these are the modern lands. These are uh, just what we have if we're playing modern, but you can actually use this in legacy too. And obviously the card pool being bigger means that we're going to have to contend with more powerful cards overall. Force of Will is a card. And so as a result, this deck, just on that basis alone, is not viable. Uh, it's way too all-in without the ability to bring itself back. It's not like, say, I don't know, Charbelcher, which, oh, you're a Force of Will deck? I'll go for the Stormkill instead. This doesn't have any alternate route. There's no Xanted Swarm I can bring in. This is just Countryside Crusher or Bust. But again, as a teaching tool, this deck does have some value, even in Legacy. Especially because this deck wins on turn 2. Or excuse me, not turn 2, turn 3. It gets out the turn 2 Countryside Crusher in Legacy. So, again, you use this to teach players you need some early interaction because turn 3 decks exist in Legacy. So the first one we have, this is one of the ways that we go and make it uh, a turn 3 kill. It's Dwarven Ruins. Comes in tapped, but you can sacrifice it to add red red to your pool. So, of course, we sacrifice it on turn two, play another mountain, and lo and behold, we have a countryside crusher, and then it goes and does its thing. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. Uh, we also have a sandstone needle. Now, this one also comes in tapped with two depletion counters. You don't have the option to only tap it for red. You instead must, if you tap it, use a depletion counter, and then you get red red. But we don't care. We're going fairly quickly anyway. Uh, so these are the ones that grant us red red, and that means that since there are four of each, we have, you know, a decent enough chance, if we have the Countryside Crusher in hand, of uh, more than 50% if there's a Countryside Crusher, of getting it out on turn two. That's nice. That's fine. Next we have uh, two that are used for cycling. So we've lost our Countryside Crusher, we need to get back in the game. If you've seen Legacy Lands, you know where this is going. There's Forgotten Cave, cycle it for red, easy enough. And then there's Smoldering Crater, you cycle for two colorless, so obviously not as good in this deck. Just helps to get you back into the game if they're in your hand. Again, once Countryside Crusher goes off, you can use it to... Well, you can use it to get another counter on it. Easy enough. We run a one of Hammerheim. It's legendary, so just one. You could run more. Landwalk is not really a thing <laughs> in Legacy. It's not. I'm sorry. But you don't really have much of an opportunity cost for running this. It still generates red without coming in tapped. It is legendary, but if you're only running one, that's not really a big deal. And if you get Blood Moon, well, it's going to make red mana anyway, so... Oh, Wasteland. That's about it. That's the only thing I can think of that would do it. That would make you not want to run Hammerheim. And if you're running all of these, that puts you at 16 mountains, notwithstanding the number of fetch lands that you might have in here as well. So this is my stupid, 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 stupid deck. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed, though. I use this uh, to teach players. You can try to make this a competitive deck, or you can just do the same thing that I did. If you try to bring this to an actual tournament, be prepared to mulligan. If you're on the play, you can mulligan to two. If you're on the draw, you can mulligan to one. Um, <laughs> it doesn't feel good. It really doesn't feel good to have to go all the way down to one. But you do what you have to do, I suppose. Um, all stars in the deck. Cavern of Souls, but if you can't afford it, that's more than alright. Uh, just because counter spells are an easy way for the deck to be defeated, this shuts that off entirely. Uh, you're still going to lose to Hand Attack, you're still going to lose to every kill spell in the book. Um, but Gitu Encampment and Care Keep can help to get you uh, stall, can help to stall the game until you get to that point. Just putting out a first strike blocker with two power and continuously throwing out chump blockers. Um, so that's it. I hope that you've enjoyed this stupid, stupid deck. Wizards, if you're watching this, if you could give us a fling that costs, say, red red and is uncounterable, <laughs> it goes straight into the deck. Auto-include. 
Uh, so for the sideboard, again, you can't really run much of a sideboard uh, because you need lands. You can't afford to put much else into the deck. You can try transforming it, uh, but if you try to make this a transformational deck, what, that's 15 cards that are actually the deck and still 45 lands? That's pretty poor. So what I try to do is I just add 15 removal spells. <laughs> I add, so like, 4 lightning bolts, 4 searing blaze, 4 anger of the gods, and 3, I don't know, I, I D G A F. <laughs> I don't know. And what I bring them in for is infect. I bring them in for zoo, I bring them in for low to the ground decks, because this allows me to just play the removal game against them a little bit, and I take out uh, just tap lands, really. I tape out, take out, excuse me, uh, teetering peaks, looming spires, smoldering spires, maybe? It still at least gives us a blocker, uh, or rather it removes one of their blockers effectively. Uh, and I don't know, maybe just mountains at that point. Everything else is mountain. And I try to win by keeping them off their creatures. And that's pretty much it. I guess maybe I'd run Flame Slash in there too, just for more cheap removal, one drop removal. Kills a lot in the format now that you don't see four million Tassigers and Siege Rhinos. Alright, so that's this dumb deck. I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.